Asylum for the Chronic Insane is located in Olga, New York, and was built in 1866, but opened its doors in 1869 by welcoming its first patient, a woman by the name of Mary Rote. Mary Rote arrived at Willard after being transported from Columbia County Poorhouse. Before arriving at Willard, Mary spent 10 years of her life chained to her bed, which left her physically deformed. When Mary was found, according to Dr. Hoyt, Secretary of the Board of State Charities, she was found crouched in a corner of a cell, partially covered with a blanket, without any other clothing or even a bed. During her stay at Willard, she was allowed to walk around, treated as a human being rather than an animal. The difference of treatment could be seen through her improved mental and physical health. She eventually died of tuberculosis on January 9, 1876. Willard Asylum received many patients that arrived in similar situations, such as a young girl who was locked in a cell since childhood, and another patient who arrived locked in a chicken crate. Willard Asylum became a place where undesirables were left. Willard strived to change the way mental institutions and society treated the mentally ill. There was an emphasis on treating patients with kindness. A treatment referred to as moral treatment, based on moral discipline, was derived partly from religious beliefs. While operating as a hospital, there were a number of amenities enjoyed by the patients, such as a theater, a bowling alley, a gym, and activities such as sewing and other crafting classes. In addition, the asylum prided itself on giving training that would allow patients to become normal societal citizens once released. For instance, the hospital was primarily self-sufficient as patients helped grow and harvest crops and tended to the livestock on the property. The founder of the asylum was Dr. Sylvester Willard, who was a New York Surgeon General. In 1864, an investigation was made concerning the treatment of the insane at county poorhouses and asylums, which revealed the horrible conditions patients suffered. Dr. Willard's findings eventually led the New York legislature to pass the Willard Act on April 6, 1865. The Willard Act was designed to authorize the establishment of a state asylum for the chronic insane and for the better care of insane poor, to be known as the Willard Asylum for the Insane. Both the state and the presidency then belonging to Abraham Lincoln signed off to create the asylum. Sadly, neither Lincoln nor Dr. Willard would live to see the asylum built. Dr. Willard died on April 2, 1865 after becoming ill with fever. As a remembrance, the asylum, which was to be named the Beth Asylum, was named after Dr. Willard instead. While the asylum striped and did indeed make breakthroughs regarding the treatment of the mentally ill, many of the practices used by the asylum today are seen as inhumane and torturous. In 1942, the hospital introduced electric shock therapy, and by 1943, doctors had administered around 1,443 treatments. However, the way many of these treatments were administered often broke many of the patients' backs. Then there are a number of patients who were not mentally ill who were checked into the asylum due to poverty, birth defects, dementia, and homosexuality. One such patient was a man by the name of Joseph Lobdell, born December 2, 1829, was admitted to Willard in 1879 after being declared insane by his own brother. Joseph was born Lucy Lobdell, but lived as a man for more than 60 years, and according to Dr. P.M. Wise, a doctor at Willard who refused to call him a man, Joseph considered himself a man in all that the name implies. Joseph was incarcerated at the asylum for 33 years before he was transferred to Binghamton State Hospital, where he later died at the age of 82 on May 29, 1912. In the 126 year one, 50,000 patients were admitted, but only half of them left the asylum alive. Some of the deaths were due to diseases such as TB and typhoid fever. In Willard Cemetery, there are 5,776 souls that are buried in unmarked graves. Instead of being buried with their names, these patients were instead buried with numbers. This is a practice common for families who do not wish to be associated with family members admitted to the asylums. However, recently in 2017, the Willard Cemetery Memorial Project Committee was allowed to publish 99 names of the Holy Cross Cemetery. As much of a hospital Willard Asylum was, it was equally a prison. After the hospital was closed in 1995 and was converted into a rehabilitation center for inmates, staff recovered hundreds of suitcases from patients who never left. Many of the items within the suitcases only show that those who were brought there believed it was temporary. One of these cases concerned one of the few African-American patients. 
a man by the name of Frank Coles. Frank Coles was a World War II veteran who had trouble finding a job in Brooklyn, New York. In 1945, he was arrested for causing a scene outside a restaurant and he kicked a couple of garbage cans after being served food on a broken plate. Rather than being sent to jail, he was taken to Kings County Hospital where he underwent a psychiatric observation. He was later transferred to a hospital in Long Island before being transferred to Willard where he was diagnosed with early dementia. The doctors there made no moves to contact his family despite the fact that his suitcase had meticulous records of their addresses. And although he was shipped out to a veterans administration hospital, his suitcase remained with Willard Asylum. For this reason, Willard Asylum is one of the most haunted places in the world. Not because of ghosts, if there are any still lingering, but because of the memories that laid forgotten in stolen suitcases in an abandoned hospital mini home.